Hello and welcome to the Jesse James Facebook page. Jesse James Beads, absolutely fantastic purveyor of the most beautiful, unique and wonderful bead mixes. What always makes me super happy when I open a brand new bead mix is just how diverse those blends can be. And I'm really excited to share today's mix with you, which is from the Holiday 2021 Bead Box Mix Collection. <gasps> she draws breath. And I'm working with I Don't Sled, I Slay, which I think is a really cool title. I'm Gem Hawks, if we haven't met before. I'm based in the United Kingdom and I'm broadcasting to you today from Oxfordshire, which is right slap bang in the middle of England, to be fair. If we've not met before, then it's my pleasure to be with you. Um, I'm Gem, as I say, and my preferred medium for working with jewellery is wire. So I'm going to show you a really cool little technique today using one of my absolutely favourite tools in the world ever. What I'd like to do to begin with, if I may, is just show you a little bit more about what we're making today. I'm just going to head over to my software and drop you down to have a look on the board. So this is the beautiful bead mix we're going to be working with. The cutest thing about these mixes is that they all come with these wonderful festive red bows. You can do absolutely whatever you fancy with them. The easiest thing to do is use them to tie your hair back. So that's always an option. But if you wanted to, you could cut the band away and use those in any particular way that you'd like to. I'm going to put mine on my tree. So this is a variation, this is the absolutely maximised version today. Now obviously you can just put one or two pieces onto this, but you may have noticed this really cool zigzagging down the edge of my little festive tree. So I'm going to show you how to create a tree form, and what you can do is size that up or size it down. I'm going to show you a slightly more diminutive fashion of this today, as if you were going to make a small pendant or a pair of earrings, but you absolutely can size it even larger than one of these. In addition to making the tree form, I'm going to show you how to make these cool little bow designs. I'm going to leave that on your screen for a moment while we see who's joining us today. Hopefully you've all had the most beautiful day thus far. Tell me where you're calling in from and where you have been today. What have you been up to? Anything exciting for you? I hope that all things are absolutely wonderful in your world. Let me just pop back up to me to say hello. As at the moment, I can't see any comments whatsoever because Facebook is being really naughty again. So that's not very helpful for me, unfortunately. I'm hopeful that perhaps somebody else is here and they can help me out with what the problem is. Facebook, as ever, being a little bit tricky. Doesn't seem to want to show me what's happening. So I'm going to see if there's another way for me to just have a look and be able to respond to any questions that you might have. So just bear with me one second whilst I have a look. Yeah, here's a way for me to see things. Happy days. I had to go slightly around the houses, but never mind. So Barbara is in. Hello, Barbara. And Sue is in from Lancaster. Is that Philadelphia? Not 100% sure on that. Sorry if that's wrong. My sister lives in Lancaster, England. Uh, Trudy is in. Hello to you, my lovely. What a sweet kit. You are not wrong, my friend. So again, many apologies if uh, Facebook is being a bit tricky. I finally managed to see your information coming up. Just not exactly how I wanted to be able to see it, but never mind. Barbara is in from Michigan. Hello and welcome to today's Jesse James Beads Facebook Live. If you're just joining us, do give us a wave, say hello, and let us know what you've been up to today. Those bow and red stripe would make great earrings with hair back out of the way. Yeah, I am a huge fan of dingly dangly earrings. So if you want to put your hair up, the longer, more exaggerated earrings you can wear. I'm, I'm a bit fearless with my earrings. To be fair, I have really rubbish thin hair, so it doesn't really get caught on ever such much. But yeah, you absolutely can. The red stripe and bow, I'm going to show you how to create those individually today, as well as that glorious tree form. And if you've never seen the wire crinkler tool, I'm so excited to show you all around this very cool tool indeed. So what I'd like to do actually is just open up the bead box so you get an idea of what's in the box before we get going. So let's just pop back down to that board. 
These things come in your bead box and all I've done is added an ear wire. Instant jewellery. The whole thing is ready made for you. So it's a head pin, star bead at the top and a beautiful coiled section all done for you. So we're going to pop those out of the way because they come ready to use. I think we're just going to have a quick look in the box. You get your little hair bow, which is really, really cute. And then in the box, you have got an absolute plethora of divine beads. They are gorgeous. I adore this one. It's, um, I guess, we would call it a lollipop in the United Kingdom. Uh, I don't know if they... Are they called suckers in America? I'm not 100% sure about that one. We've got some humbugs, I guess they would be. The bell is absolutely adorable as well. And then you've got lots and lots of these little bows in different colours. You've got spangly beads, you've got glass beads, beautiful colours of the crystals. I'm not going to tip them all out because it'll take me a month and I will never get it back in the box. I don't know how many of you have ever been able to repack them. Let's see. Nope, I've absolutely massacred that. And that's just showing you a few of those pieces. It's beautiful because it shows you just how much you get in the box. And you've got your cute little bow to go with. So I'm going to pop that out of the way. And while we're waiting for everybody to come and join us this afternoon, or well, it's this afternoon for me, this morning perhaps for you, I'm going to show you a couple of other pieces of jewellery that I've made. So you saw the earrings a moment ago. I've also made an expanding bangle. Lots and lots of beads on this one. Love these. They are so cute. Love the sparkle. I'm going to show you how to create that little bow in a short while. So I'll pop that one back out of the way. And then I've also made this cute pendant, which you could also just hang on the tree if you wanted to, with that lollipop centre. I think they're really, really cool. Again, using the wire crinkler tool. And whilst we're waiting for people to just come in and join us, hello, Sharon, good to see you. I want to show you the tool that I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about today. So let's have a look and make sure that you can see that safely. A tricky decision to make with lighting. Enough light to show you what's happening, too much light and you get a glare. So if I just tilt that up slightly, artistic wire company and this is the wire crinkler i've popped the link into the video description for you it's absolutely my favorite tool in the world now these things last it's a well worthwhile investment and not a terribly expensive tool the reason i'm showing you this one i have had this for it must be nine maybe even going on ten years and it's still going it's got a bit of tape underneath so it doesn't scratch my board and over the years it's been dropped more than once but it's still going you also get a slightly more cloud shaped one so you get a slightly more bubbly gear i suppose you would call it and then you get the spiky one we're going to be using the spiky one today i want to use my old one because i've had it for a very long time and i just want to prove to you how long they do last so we're going to use this tool today and the wire gauges for today are 18 20 and 26. roberta is in hello my darling can't hang out like normal but wanted to say hi to Jem and friends all the jjb beady friends hello roberta it's lovely to see you thank you so much for popping in even briefly it's lovely to have your company just for a hot minute there so I'm going to show you the basic outline of the tree. I'm going to make a slightly smaller one for you today. If you'd like to think of it as perhaps earrings or a car mirror decoration or even a dinky little pendant. Maybe you don't have room for a giant tree in your home and you'd quite like small items to go on a mini tree. We're going to show you the basic idea and you can size it up if you want to make something huge or you can size it down even smaller. Whichever way you choose to work with that, it's going to be really Really, really pretty for you today so I also want to show you before we go on I've shown you all the different jewelry that I've made today let me pop my crinkler out of the way for the second asides even that expanding bangle with all those gorgeous beads on even after I made that there's still all these left in the box still all these beads to work with these are absolutely fascinating absolutely gorgeous very very interesting you can never have too many little disc spaces. They are incredibly cool. And I didn't use the little dingly bell. So I might make something for my friend's cat, Dave. I'm sure Dave would love that. 
I'm pretty sure Dave would hate it, to be fair, but I would like to see it on him. Good afternoon to Margaret from Edinburgh. How are you today, my darling? Virginia says the red and whites are like starlight mints we get in red or white or green and white around Christmas. And lollipop versus sucker is a regional thing in the US. OK, so you would understand me if I said lollipop anyway, which is good. Love these as well. I imagine it's clay and rhinestone. I probably will be corrected if I'm wrong. So much more left to use, and I've created lots of pieces already. So I'm going to show you a slightly more simple and a small variation to this piece. Just going to clear the deck slightly. I know if Rosanna is in, she will agree with me. Things normally go on the floor if you're me. What I'm going to do is just pop that tree up into the top corner so you can refer to it if you need to. I'm sure you don't need to, though. So we're working with three different gauges of wire. Now, I just need to get them in the correct order. Here we go. First of all, can we all see the silver on my brand new canvas? Hopefully, because it's non-reflective, you can still see that silver wire. Any issues, give me a shout. Anne is in from California. Good morning to you, Anne. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Love the ornament. I had so much fun making it. Thank you very much, my lovely. And now I really quite fancy a mint. <laughs> So to create your basic tree shape, what we would do is literally just create that tree shape. It is not challenging at all in the slightest. You can size it up or size it down. So for the piece in question, which is compared to my hand, got my hand there, you can see the kind of size that we're looking at. I have managed to stab myself in the hand today with various things at work. So many apologies for the back of that looking like I've seen cats. What I'm going to do is show you that around about 15 inches of wire would make a piece this kind of size. So if I grab my ruler, we're working in inches today. So top to bottom, that's going to end up around about four inches from, let's say, 12 to 15 inches of that 18 gauge or one millimetre wire. So if you want to recreate something that's four inches high to go on the tree, for instance, then that is the one to go for. Anne says, yes, I can see the wire. Hi, Miss Gem from Cape um, Maine, New Jersey. Hope you're having a blessed day. Bless you and thank you so much for coming in. It's lovely to see you. Always wonderful to have your company. Thank you so much. So what we have here is a great big long length of wire to make a four inch top to bottom tree. What I'm going to do is trim that in half. So I'm looking at around about six to seven inches. 18 gauge and it's round wire now if you want to you absolutely can create this with square wire uh, it is not a problem at all what you would need to do is just give that wire the ever present warm as we always do just to smooth that between thumb and forefinger to make sure that that's soft fluid and ready to be worked i know i repeat that but just in case you're new to wire or you're new to the jesse james facebook page it's always worth giving that a little warm just to make it work harder for you beer getter zen hello everyone i'm watching you from germany hello beer getter i hope you're having a beautiful day so what i'm going to do with my let's say around about seven inches of that 18 gauge wire I'm going to find the center point and I'm going to make that sharp tree tip at the top like so you can make that softer if you want to but I actually quite like the idea of that being quite firm so once I've got that point in at the top I'm just going to swap that around and try and get that pretty straight now if you are going to use square wire much easier to get that straight and to be able to see it you could hammer that if you particularly wanted to but i'm working with 18 gauge because it holds just about the right amount of tension whereabouts in germany are you uh, watching in from bigot i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly my driver on the day i got married 19 years ago was also german and also named bigot so i'm hoping that that's the correct pronunciation so once you've decided how tall you want your tree to be we're going to look at the top to the widest part for the next segment so i'm going to approximately halve the size i have on the display piece and just pop a lovely sharp bend now my tree is currently upside down so that doesn't make much sense let's flip it over so you can see it hopefully that is all visible to you i'm just going to flip back to my streaming software to make sure that i can see that okay yeah it looks like a glorious great big four at the moment so what we're looking to do is to get that lower line straight across on the horizontal 
once we have that nice and horizontal we can actually use it to measure the other side you could if you wanted to use a tape measure like an absolute mad lad and make that absolutely perfect but i'm just going to go by eye pop my bent chain nose pliers underneath that point where the over the y that we've already bent is going across the top there we go so let me just hold on to that firmly and what i'm going to do is take this second side and just push that so that those two lines cross over so I think probably the side on the right is just slightly longer, but I'm not going to be overly worried. You know, trees do grow sometimes not perfectly straight. So I'm just going to hold that and think, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So we've got our basic traditional fur kind of shape. If you want to take a little bit longer or just use a ruler, you absolutely can make sure that that's exactly the same. So the next thing we're going to do is put a little bit of a trunk on it and this is just a basic shape formation you can absolutely size these down even more so i'm just going to push one across now again what you can do is use a tape measure to ensure that the distance from here to the trunk is the same on the other side but here's a little tip for you if you very carefully just close this up what you can do is use the first side as a gauge to measure that second side what i'm going to do is flip the whole thing over like so pop those pliers underneath on the straight wire measure that up and then push that line down so we've got a very strange looking like a mangled paper clip at the moment and i'm just going to open that back up and in that way i've cheated and i know that those two distances are approximately the same distance so the next thing I'm going to do is to make sure that that trunk segment is upright. It can be as wide or as narrow as you want it to. When I was a child, I lived in a trailer and every year we would dig up a little tiny fir tree that lived in the yard and we'd pop it in a box in a great big tub, bring it into the main living area of the caravan we lived in. And every year we'd have a tiny little Christmas tree and every uh, year after the Christmas period was over when Yule was finished it went back out into the garden it survived for years it didn't grow very large but that was fine it was a small living space so I'm going to turn my tree shape upside down again I'm going to pop my pliers into position and I'm going to use the size of the pliers to judge before bringing that first section out to the side Jesse James Beads says, I love how Gem always makes it look so easy. Thank you, May. That's really kind of you. It's a lot of practice and a lot of failures that went in the bin when no one was looking. So when you do get into wire work and you feel that you're not creating at a level you'd like to be creating at, it's all about practice and every bend in the wire that you do every mistake you make is all about learning and bettering your craft so never be sad just be thinking that you're learning Catherine has arrived hello Gem and sorry I am late do not ever apologize we're all busy I appreciate you coming and sharing your company with us today it's lovely of you to join us so I've just popped a little line going outwards on the other side now you don't have to make this into a little pot at the bottom you could make wrinkly wrinkly roots instead if you wanted to you could just make this a mad section of curls if you wanted to replicate a tree in nature you could even leave it straight if you wanted to pop some little coils on the end what i am going to do is create a little pot shape because i think it's cute and i'd always rather see a potted tree than a cut off tree that's just my preference i'm always reminded of that one episode of friends where phoebe wants the really ugly tree the one that's lost all of his needles because that resonates very strongly with me <laughs> uh, margaret says true gem is an amazing teacher you're making me blush love thank you so much darling sue says just ordered my crinkle tool remember to use the 10 percent off for tools one of the specials this week my goodness that is so good to know yes so do listen to sue she has news for you Catherine says thank you so much sweetie no thank you thanks for coming in i hope you're all having a beautiful day so far all good so i'm going to make a little pot shape and then i'm going to cross those wires over and i will show you very quickly just how to weave them together so you don't have to have a pot at the bottom if you don't want to i am just going to get a little tapered line on the one side flip that over a little tapered line on the other side and again I'm using the breadth of my pliers to estimate that distance to be the same you could use the same technique we used earlier to cross those over 
gives you a better idea of whether or not those are the same or you could just you know be normal and use a ruler <laughs> or even an off-cut piece of wire is often a handy thing to have you can kind of judge with one of those now this doesn't have to actually stand up mine is hanging I've just put some ribbon in at the top there uh, so that it will hang on the tree when we eventually put that up in about the third week of December because that's how my life runs it's usually fairly chaotic so I'm going to put a nice attractive angle on this I'm just imagining that this is a garden pot and that is how that will sit it doesn't have to physically stand up so that can be as narrow or as broad as you like May has said thank you to Sue for the reminder. That's very kind of you, Sue. Thank you. So what we're going to do is just to create a little bit of a pot shape. I'm going to come down that last straight line of wire and just push that over in one direction, like so. I actually want that to be quite sharp, so I'm going to take it further than the angle I want and then draw it back, and you get a slightly firmer corner to work with. It just needs to be slightly straighter flip that over and I'm going to use the bottom of the pot there as a guide for the other side so if I draw that one ever so slightly inside the other it doesn't matter which way around it is but what you can see is one next to the other rather than both one on top of the other okay so I'm going to have quite a narrow trunk on my tree I'm going to pop my wire sorry my pliers onto the wire that's sitting inside the box not the one that's sitting outside and I'm just going to turn that up so that it sits inside the pot and then I'm going to trim that away it doesn't have to be at any particular point just above now if I just get rid of that sharp little off cut we don't want to mess around with that too much and then what I'm going to do is trim off just on the line of the pot at the bottom so if I hold that in position with my cutters always pays to look twice and cut once <laughs> there we go this would actually look cute on a Christmas tree hold on let me just have a look at that comment I'm curious if I made a bigger one and add lights to it oh my gosh that would be amazing little battery powered LED lights would be fabulous on one of these it would be fantastic Zoe what a great idea so what I've got is two sections where there's double wire the rest of it is a single segment of wire so if I drop that down onto the page for a second and just make sure that that's flat you can see it's a basic tree outline but there's an angle down at the bottom I'll just open that out so you've got two lines of wire that sit at the bottom two lines of wire that sit up just one side now the reason I've doubled up the wire here is to create a really good and secure safe section at the base and then you have a nice solid shape if you have just a single pass of wire there's nothing for it to grip onto I'm going to show you very very briefly just how to weave these two sections together down at the bottom and for this I'm going to use a short length of my 26 gauge round if I had any different colours with me that would be super handy but I don't have any which is a bit of a shame now I've only cut off a couple of inches purely because I don't want to repeat the process over and over I just want to show you the idea and then you can continue on uh, Clarice says beautiful well that's really kind of you thank you and yes Zoe if you do make an illuminated tree we'd love to see it that would be fabulous so what I'm going to do is just very very briefly show you how to wind these two sections together where you've got those two passes of wire down at the bottom and up the right hand side it doesn't matter which side I'm going to lay my finer gauge wire just over the top of the whole thing to begin with what I want to do is post that up between those two passes of wire if I put my finger underneath hopefully you can see that and I'm going to wrap three times around just that outer wire so I pull that through sometimes if it's a bit tricky and it doesn't want to get started so let's wrap once and that's a second turn around the wire draw the wire up and through so we've now got a little set of three wraps I just need to pop onto my streaming software to ensure that you can see that wrapped three times just around the outer section and what I'm going to do now is bring the finer gauge wire up in the center of that tree trunk if you'd like me to bring a darker color in just for a second I've got purple here and of course I've knocked my wire on the floor 
So this is just to show you this weaving section. The rest doesn't really matter. It's just this finer gauge wire. So I'm going to wrap now around both that truncated, the cut off upright and the outer of the plant pot. I'm going to wrap around one time around both of those before posting that tail of wire up and wrapping three times around just the outside. It's a very, very simple weave. You can do any weave you want. All we're doing is drawing those two sections of wire together. So that's one around the outside section. That's a second wrap. What I might do once I've done this third wrap is just refocus the camera for a moment to ensure that you can see how that is progressing. I need to bring that section down and out of the way. What I'm going to do is just bring this up closer to the camera and for a second my camera is going to wobble but what you should be able to see is how that's coming together. Please don't look at my nails, I work with my hands every day. So what you can see is there are three wraps around the outside of that frame and then one wrap which goes around both the inner and the outer and then another three wraps around just the outside and you'll simply continue on in the exact same pattern whatever pattern you choose so we've got a single wrap around bring that back up both of those wires before returning to three wraps around just the outside now I don't want to go on and on of this I need to now refocus my camera and drop it back down to the base which means it's going to be squishy vision for just a second and again apologies for the state of my fingers they do work quite hard <laughs> so there we go what i'm going to do is just post those ends away trim them off and show you bear with me a second let me get those out of the way before they stab me up the nail that would be very very painful i'm going to bring the feature back in and what I've done is I've just gone along the inside and outside on one side of the tree pot. You could go along the base as well if you wanted to. And it's just to make sure that that frame is now nice and solid. And it just makes this something that hopefully will last for years to come. So I pop my tree back up in the corner. We're going to take a look next at the wire crinkler tool. See, if there are any questions, please do shout again, because again, Facebook is being super tricksy. It's not showing me all of the things that are being said. Now, I would like to reiterate that I have had this particular wire crinkler for about a million years. That may be a mild exaggeration. It's been about nine or ten years, perhaps. The wire I've chosen to work with here is 0.8mm, which is equivalent to 20 gauge. It is round wire. I do not use any profiled wire with my wire crinkler. It's got tape on the bottom and it's been dropped more times than I've had coffee today, um, which is many. So hopefully you'll forgive the fact that this is an old one. When they come out to you, you get the crinkly side and you get a softer, more cloud-like side as well. And you simply lift one of those gears off the tool and put the other one on. So you would use both the crinkly one or both the rounded one, both together. I wouldn't use them. It's displayed like so, so that you can see what they look like. But I always use them spiky side to spiky side. So I've cut myself again quite a long length. This is about 12 inches of 20 gauge round wire. I'm using silver wire and I've gone for a matte background. So hopefully you can see that really clearly. Um, hence the change up in the backgrounds. I just wanted to make it as clear as possible. This is around about 12 inches, I believe. For a smaller tree, you will need nowhere near as much. But what I tend to do is just crinkle up a fair amount and then I've got spare to work with the next time. Now on your crinkler tool you won't have a bit of tape or a bit of glue, it'll be beautiful. I'm going to take the end of my 20 gauge wire, post it through the hole, there's a guide hole here for you. And what we're looking to do is to aim to get the wire we're posting through about halfway up one of the gears. So if I take the gear off and show you that side on, it's pretty deep. When you put the wire in between those two gears, you're aiming for halfway up that gear. So if I pop the gear back on the pin, you've got a pin on either side, they come apart like so. The pins stay in the base, as does the guide post, and you pop on with, you've got a handle on one side and the other side is free spinning as you operate the handle. So you would need to operate the one with the handle like so, 
and what we're looking to do is to get the tip of that wire that we're posting through the guide hole halfway up the crinkler gears once it bites it will draw through by itself so this is 20 gauge wire can you see how that's coming out it's so much fun if I turn this through 90 degrees hopefully you'll be able to see that progress a little bit better like so and once it gets going it's fabulous now I've just caught that on my lamp so it'll probably make everything go boink in just a second I'm going to take that all the way through to finish it off it is in fact banging on that lamp so sorry about the noise if I pull that slightly to one side it should now coil around in the other direction it is of course banging on everything and you're probably getting some horrible feedback so sorry about that take that all the way through until that whole section of wire is done so that is your crinkler tool yours won't look like this it will look beautiful and pristine in the artistic wire you get a little demonstration on the back my key thoughts on this tool when you're loading the wire through that guide hole aim for it to be halfway up that gear when you get that to catch in the center and it will pull through beautifully it's just slightly trickier if you get that too low or too high clara says amazing jesse james says this is magical thank you may uh, if you're having issues streaming the live sometimes pausing it allows it to buffer absolutely fantastic idea facebook is a tricky place but i love it we wouldn't be here together without it so what can i say what i will say about the wire that you've put through the crinkler it gains a slight spring now the reason that's got a spring to it is because you have hardened it by putting it between those two gears which is fantastic that's what we want i would only use 20 gauge or lighter I've never put an 18 gauge through my crinkler and that may be why it's lasted for such a very long time. Now I have always referred to these whenever I'm teaching with the crinkler as valleys, the low point, mountains, the high point. And I think you can understand why I do that. It just makes life so much easier for teaching rather than going the, the low pointy bit or the high pointy bit. So when you hear me teaching with this tool, we've got valleys. And we've got mountain peaks what gets confusing is when it turns upside down but maybe we won't do that today so what you will also see dependent on where your wire starts you'll sometimes get half of a, a, a side of a mountain or a valley so what i like to do to begin with is just cut that off doesn't matter if it's on the mountain or the valley side ring spinning around sorry and the next thing i'm going to do is to show you how i finish every time I use the wire crinkler I put a little flourish on the end and for that I'm going to use my round nose pliers these are very affordable pliers and they are very very useful so if I flip this over so that I've finished off on the peak of a mountain what I'm going to do is turn just that one side of a mountain into a small loop this means that there's no because that's quite sticky outy we don't want to catch that on the tree or the cat or our jewelry or in our hair skin clothes fine frilly scarves that we like to wear at winter or i do i don't know about you guys it's possible that you do also we want to make that a finished end so i'm going to take my round nose pliers i'm going to pop them very close to that end of the mountain and i'm going to rotate my pliers around so that that end piece bends over and meets the side of the mountain before it and then once i have got that small loop section i'm going to give that a very firm squish to make sure that that's nice and firm and set in position now that will be more rigid than normal 20 gauge wire because it has been through the crinkler which has in some way given that a bit of work hardening bigot says wow an amazing tool virginia says dang another tool i need you will not regret it it is a stunningly useful tool for the last nine to ten years i used it maybe three or four times every single week it's not expensive it is well worth an investment and you know like i said i've dropped this so many times it's been lent out on my workshops it's been used by 
many many hands <laughs> and it's still going it's still functional so get one they are fabulous so once we've got that end section nice and firm what we're going to do is have a bit of a measure on our chosen tree so i haven't finished off that weaving at the bottom because i don't want to spend my whole life repeating the same thing if you've just joined us now if you rewind a little bit on the replay you'll see a close-up of how that's all come together so what i want to do now is decide whereabouts i want the tree to end now what i need to do if we have a look at the back of this design is make sure that when we get up to the top of the tree we're in a position where we've got the valleys touching the tree like so hopefully you can see that let me just pop back to my streaming software yes you absolutely can if that is too much in space when we bend the crinkled section of wire it won't look quite as pretty so we would like to have that valley touching up at the top of the tree and that's going to decide how we bend the wire to create that all-important V shape up at the top now if it doesn't go perfectly it doesn't matter just put something over the top I popped a bow on the top of this one because I think there should be something fancy at the top of the tree could be a star could be a fairy whatever you fancy could be some of those beautiful gossamer wings from one of those summer collections it's your Christmas tree or it's your festive tree your Yule tree whatever you like to connotate it to I don't know um, what you prefer to call it but your tree your design you pop whatever you fancy on the top I popped one of these beautiful ribbon sections on and that's just popping some finer gauge wire through whatever aperture I could find I'm going to show you in a little while how to do the bows so you could put a bow on top if you want so what I'm going to do is just pop that back over to the side for a moment see if we have any questions so far all good so far so we have got doesn't matter if the zigzags are north of the base of the tree or if they hang over the bottom a little bit it doesn't really matter it's just not that important what we need to do is to get the shape changing up at the top so that it can come back down on itself so I'm going to estimate that this is where I want that to happen so I'm going to pop my bent chain nose pliers underneath very firmly grab hold of that and just fold it over now you'll see that that second section is slightly mangled very very quickly and gently I'm able to swap that over now if you were making an Aztec design you could certainly use that kind of style so this is going to cross over behind the top of the tree and like I said before you can put something over the top if you wanted to so what we then need to do is to make sure that that zigzag is straight on the other side and then we need to check that we're going to cut off at the same position so if I just very gently close that up for a moment if you look at the section that I'm bringing together we're only needing half of one of those zigs or a zigzag you could say it's a mountain and a valley all that you like it's a zig and a zag <laughs> I'm going to trim off here and then just show you how we're going to repeat on the opposite side to make that symmetrical again it doesn't have to be symmetrical it's your tree I'm going to flip that over for a second because it's easier for me as a right-handed individual to roll the wire around like so the key point is that we're taking this outwards so that rolling action is occurring outwards so I pop those pliers into the tip of the mountain there and just roll that back around you can see that those are symmetrical so I'm going to give that a squeeze as well on this side just so that that sits neatly I'm going to close those two loops up you can make them slightly smaller or slightly larger if you want to entirely up to you so I'm going to open that back out again very very gently and fit it into my tree design like so what I'm going to show you now is how to attach that onto the side I could have made that slightly longer I could have tilted the crossover section a little bit further north but I'm not overly fretting about that the idea is that you've got this zigzaggy effect going on now I do need to just grab my wire which went on the floor because it's me and if something doesn't go on the floor you'll probably wonder what's actually happening what's going on Gem didn't drop anything is it really her well it is really me I'm going to cut a small section of wire again because I'm just showing you the technique of how to add the zigzags on the side of your tree form 
so you could take that up to the top like so so that it's the peak of your tree shape sits inside the zigzag section if you want it to sit down further you can do that behind it's up to you you make that fit how you want to I'm going to take that up to the top like so the key point here is what we're going to do is wrap once around the tree frame we're going to spiral up that tree frame and then we're going to wrap once around both the valley and the tree frame so I'm going to lay my wire over the top and I'm going to pick approximately the central point so my fine this is 26 gauge round silver plated copper wire I'm sitting it over the top of both the tree shape and that zigzag section get those pliers out of the way and what I'm going to do is wrap one time around both the valley and the tree frame and push the rest of that wire underneath and up inside that tree frame what I'm going to do then is spiral the tail of that wire around just the tree frame push the residue back up and inside the center of the tree frame what I'm looking to do is have a ratio here of one wrap around both sections to one wrap around just the tree itself if I put my hand underneath again I might just pop that deep purple felt underneath I'm not sure that that's actually very helpful but hopefully you can see those two wires if you need me to zoom in do tell me and I will do that let's have a look do you think we need to zoom in a little bit or are you happy if nothing is on the floor are you really a maker says May this is a true story Margaret says loving this technique Gem you're very very kind my lovely thank you so much what I'm going to do is one turn around at this focal length if you need it zoomed in tell me and I will do a little bit of zoomy zoomy and then I'll show you the technique again so all the way around both the tree frame and the valley section of the crinkled part push the wire all the way around and then back up into the center drag the tail of the wire around and then it was helpful with the purple right I will bring the purple back in it is my favorite color you know and if you didn't know that hi I'm Jem I'm a purpleaholic so we've spiraled around the tree the side of the tree frame and we're capturing the wire that is crinkled at the valley points so we're going to go all the way around just the tree for that section push the tail up inside the whole thing now when we get down to that loop we created this is a cool way to anchor any wire crinkled section so I'm going to take the very tail of that wire push it inside the loop pull that all the way through making sure that the crinkled section is side by side with the tree section it isn't going on top it isn't going underneath and then we're going to finish off by wrapping three times around just the tree frame it doesn't have to be three times it's my favorite number for wrapping so that's three little wraps around the back there if I flip the design over I'm going to trim that wire so there's a tiny excess just get rid of that wire into the scrap pot I get the tiny excess there and then push it so that the end of the wire sits inside the tree frame it doesn't end on the front it doesn't end on the back if I flip the design back over and then spin that around in the opposite direction hopefully you can see we have that spiraling so my finer gauge my 26 gauge wire is constantly spiraling in the same direction around the tree frame and every second wrap it's capturing that little bit of crinkled wire so I'm going to push the tail round what you can do at this stage is still move this up and down so I'm going to take this up to the top so that we've got a flat top on that tree I'm just going to push the leading edge of that wire up so that we can capture just the tree frame on this part of the spiral draw it all the way around the outside and it captures both the valley section of the crinkled wire and the tree frame and we're just going to t continue with that section of wire you can post it up through if you like if you prefer that technique to using the leading edge technique whatever is happiest in your hands now I did slightly mash that earlier so I'm going to take a hot second to get that a little bit more symmetrical you can obviously take much longer to make this really super neat and tidy just popping back to my streaming software to make sure everything is in focus hopefully you can see that 
I'm just going to finish off the one side so taking that all the way around just the tree frame one time around both the valley of the crinkled section and the tree frame itself and then one more time around whoops a daisy sorry camera one more time around just the tree frame before spiraling around at the top now if this is a problem for you to spiral around at the top don't do it just cut the wire off after three wraps on the frame and start again with a second piece of wire what I'm going to do is lazily allow that wire to wrap around a couple of times push the wire down into the center of the tree and then I'm going to do that same thing on the other side so I've got two little wraps up at the top there just near the top of the tree only on the tree frame so that's one and two to make that symmetrical push those up so that they're vaguely in the same place and then we start down on the other side wrapping the valley section of our crinkled wire to our tree frame so that's once push the tail of the wire down you can see that's a little bit loose there so I'm just going to give that a squish to make sure that that sits neatly you may need to just straighten that up as you go and then we would continue loosely spiraling all the way down now when I say loosely spiraling I don't mean that the wire is baggy there is tension here to hold everything tightly together uh, amazing says Wendy thank you very very much I can imagine the Christmas tree with the Mickey Mouse buttons that would be absolutely stunning Sue says I know what I'm giving everyone for Christmas this year that's absolutely fantastic I hope that they love it now Facebook is being tricky and not showing me any more comments than that so if I have not responded to your comment on the live uh, many apologies I simply can't see it because Facebook so yes I hope that you love these they would look great with Mickey Mouse please make it and share it in the uh, secret group so I'm just going to spin a couple of more turns around so the key here you're keeping your crinkled section on the same plane as the tree if it slips over the top you'll get an uneven look if it slips underneath same you need to keep them side by side so there's a little bit of tension there but the good kind of tension you do need to have a reasonable pinch if you're struggling with pinch strength you could use something like a ring clamp or even a bulldog clip so just to hold that firmly into position whatever makes your life easier once you get used to using your wire crinkler tool this technique is everything once I've just whizzed round to the bottom and I'm just going to take that last section up through the loop would you believe there was enough wire it's a very short amount of wire it's only about four or five inches of the 26 gauge I'm just going to use my pliers to spin off the last little section on the end so because I have three wraps on this side I'm going to replicate three wraps on this side and then again I'm going to make sure that the wire truncates just inside the tree frame rather than front side or back side now squeeze tighten up those coils you spend more time than I have just done making that neater if I pop that down it's actually been really fast to make that little tree shape so I hope that you're enjoying the tutorial so far what I would like to show you before I go if I spin this around pop the tree on the felt the only problem with the felt is that the beads sometimes stick to it but hopefully we will manage to get around that I'll show you the mini tree you can make it even smaller make it earring size once you've woven all the way along this section it looks much tidier so if I lift the bow here you'll see that I wove all the way from the top of the tree pot to the bottom of the tree pot you could also go all the way along the base as long as you've got those two angles of the tree pot that are replicated so you don't just sort of cut off and leave one elongated outline you've got those crossover bits you can wire them together and it adds strength but once that's finished off it's nice and strong and it will hold its shape I'm going to show you now how to make one of these little bow shapes which you can pop on your tree use by themselves use anywhere at Christmas time so what I need to do what I should have done earlier is grabbed one of those beads ready fortunately I have a pack here I'm going to pop one of those beautiful round beads out they're a little bit like candy cane colors I guess and we're going to work now in some let me see where I put it we're going to work again in 20 gauge wire now you can once you've got the feel for this technique take that up into 18 gauge wire for much stronger and long lasting designs 
to see if we have any questions so far beautiful says margaret you're an absolute dull thank you so much for all of your positive comments i do appreciate them for this technique we are going to use just one of these beads we're going to use a short length this is around about five inches of 20 gauge round wire i'm using silver plated copper i'm going to grab a hold of the end and get that beautifully warm and fluid now it does work so much better if you take this step if you're brutal with your wire it makes bends that are not as fluid or flowing as they might be these beads because they have quite a large hole are absolutely perfect if you have large hole beads now there are some beautiful large hole beads let me just grab one of those that i didn't use you've got these which i tend to use on um what are they called macrame bracelets i tend to put things like this in macrame bracelets because you can put a very very thick core of fabric down the center something like this you could use very very heavy wire but it pays to begin with that 20 gauge because it gives you a feel for the technique so we have around about five inches of that beautiful now very fluid 20 gauge round wire particularly interested in that central section being quite fluid that's where we're going to start we're going to find the center of our section of wire any questions just shout oh may says we love learning from you you are so kind may thank you big hugs and love we're going to find the center section of our length of wire again five inches 20 gauge and i'm going to pop on with my round nose pliers now what i want to do is create a lovely smooth warm link just up at the top like so it's not a link at all it's a, a bit of a hairpin bend as it were what i want to do is create that using my round nose pliers but then pinch it together now if those wires cross over it does not matter one little bit you can straighten them out like so what we're looking for is to draw those two so that they're side by side or crossing over and what i'm going to do then is take the tails of that wire and push it through the bead hence with the larger hole beads it's very very easy and you can work this with quite large wire so we've got a hanging loop at the top perfect for putting directly onto your ear wires if you want to what we're going to do now if I just find those ends and just very gently flare them apart I'm just going to give those a quick trim to make sure that the flush cut is available to me we are watching on the TV and hubby just hollered out can you hear me <laughs> I'm afraid not my dear I'm so sorry I cannot actually hear you <laughs> so we've got now two lovely flush ends to work with and we've slightly splayed those wires let me just check that we are still in focus yeah okay so what i'm going to do is pop my finger between those two wires and just splay that apart if you are using a much larger uh, hold bead you would need to be careful that it simply doesn't pop off the top so you'd need to modify the size of the loop that we've created so i went about this far down my round nose pliers bearing in mind not all round nose pliers are the same it's not a massive loop but it's not a teeny tiny loop and i know that i can push the wire down inside the bead and it's not going to fall away so we've got those wires splayed apart what we're going to do now is try to open that out just a little bit more but not too much now the next section isn't tricky but it's great to learn on this finer gauge wire so that you can translate that to heavier wire if you want to again with the round nose pliers i'm just going to take that tree out of the way for a second because it's getting in the way i'm going to use a much thicker part of my round nose pliers for this segment popping back to my streaming software so i can see for reference now I'm going to go quite close down to the bottom of my pliers so it's a nice broad circular shape that we're using you could use your multi-step bail making pliers if you have them what I'm going to do is roll the wire away so that we start getting a little bit of a funny leg shape pop those pliers in and draw that tail all the way around and over the top so that's the first half of our bow shape now because I had to move that halfway through to show it to camera it's not the most perfect fluid circular form so I'm going to take a second just to modify that by hand and give that a really good scrunching crunch to make it sit in the right shape I'm going to flip the design upside down now 
pop the pliers in at approximately the same shape, size, sorry, and just roll that around. Now, if I remove those pliers and look at it upside down, I should be able to tell that the lower section, if I flip it over like so, this is the lower side of the design, the lower side of the looped bow, they need to be kind of lined up at the same approximate size. So that's a really good moment you can remove those pliers and just check that that fits. So I'm going to take that tail all the way around again because I've removed the pliers to show you part work. It may not be absolutely perfect but you can do that in one move without having to worry about a camera half an inch above. What I'm going to do now is tie the bow off. So not like you would tie your shoes because that would be quite tricky in wire. What I'm going to do is take the tail of the wire on this side and chase it around where it comes out of the bead. So if I turn this on its side I'm going to grip the rounded form of that ribbon like so and I'm only gripping this where single sections of wire not where the wire crosses over. I'm going to push that wire down and away and if I remove the pliers you can see the wire has come out of the bottom of the bead, created that ribbon shape, passed underneath itself. If I flip this over to the side now I can even do that last little bit by hand. So I'm going to leave it in that position whilst I repeat on the opposite side pop those pliers in on the other looped section, push the wire around the back and draw it up. Now very very gently I'm just going to give that a tiny squish and a tiny squeeze. This is the time at which you would check that these were close enough to being the same size that you want them to be. And what I'm going to do now is grip a hold of that bow section, draw the tail of the wire over and down the front. So we've just, it's not really a wrapped loop but it is very similar in its technology and I'm just going to draw that wire out to the side. A little bit of warmth goes a long way. I'm going to repeat the technique on the far side, draw that up and over, very very gentle squeeze before drawing that away. Now the last technique to show you on this part of the design is to create these cool little spirally bits that we, we went mad for when we're wrapping presents. Sometimes if you've got a pair of scissors and a reel of ribbon you can't help but make too many coily sections or curly sections. I'm going to use my round nose pliers and what I'm going to do is just start moving in very small sections. So if I turn that around, and I'm, this is all in the wrist like so, turn that around and start spiralling that away. I'm going to flip that over to continue in the opposite direction because I went the wrong way. And I'm going to wrap that around and around and around and around, making a little bit of a spiral. Now I have just got that slightly stuck on my pliers but you can very gently move that away. So there's a tiny difference in the size, the end of that ribbon is ever so slightly smaller. What I'm going to do is grip a hold of the wire that's coming out of the base of that bow and I'm just going to gently turn that so that the spiral comes outwards. Now hopefully I might get it right this time. Pop those pliers in near the top and start spiralling the wire around one side of your round nose pliers like so. So you can see where I went wrong the first time. You can see the spiral is building up around that side of the pliers. Remove your pliers from position. If I pop my bent chain nose pliers underneath I can just turn that ribbon tail away and you can be quite funky and festive with these. You can even, if you want to, draw them out slightly. What will happen, whoops, what will happen is that these will then catch on things. So if you don't have cats harassing your festive tree, probably not a huge problem. One thing I will say is this sticky bit on the end, the very very last section of wire, I tend to just close that up so that it sits against the spiral above it. This is a slightly tighter one and that's already happened. It doesn't matter if they're not the same length. When I make bows to go on gifts, they're probably never the same length anyway. So all I did to attach this to the tree was add a jump ring. I don't have a jump ring to hand so I'm going to very very quickly make one. This is not great for finishing jewellery because you will end up with not the correct cut, not the correct size, but to show you in a different colour, let's 
get that together to show you the basic idea if you're going to create jump rings yourself it's much better to saw cut them so i'm just going to give that a little bit of an emergency squish and we're going to pretend that this is a professionally sawn jump ring that you've got from jesse james beads in a wonderful pack that says jump rings and it's not one that you just watched me make for 30 seconds so i'm going to open this jump ring like so two pairs of pliers is usually quite helpful attach the jump ring through the loop at the top of the bow i'm going to support that add it into the tree where i think it will look quite festive and i think just here will be quite nice allow the tree to sit around and then i probably will need my second pair of chain nose pliers just to close that jump ring up so you open and close jump rings in a specific way you don't open them outwards like this you open them like so and that is how i've added the festive bow onto the tree shape now before we go any further i'm just going to pop my head up and say hello for a hot second it's still me it's definitely still me nobody else took over because things fell on the floor so you definitely know it was me before i love you and leave you for today i'm going to show you some of the other pieces of jewelry that i made with this beautiful box i don't sled i slay which just makes me think of buffy so i'm going to pop you back down to the overhead camera and I'm going to show you some of the other pieces that were made with this collection. That's the problem with felt. It sticks to things. So there we go. Here's an open and closable adjustable bangle. Now, we did show you how to make this. Uh, was it last week, the week before? And that's got a lot of these beautiful and the colours are perfect. It's such a festive feel to it. We used the crystals to create the bow using the exact same technique as the one we just created together exactly the same technique and then as well as that i made this entire tree design this will be going on my tree this year because why not there are also the easiest to make christmas or festive or yule earrings in possibility it's just added ear wires these come in the box i was blown away how easy is that and then i made this cute little pendant as well Let's move that up slightly and then I still had, hold tight, hand's not working, there we go, all of those beads were still available from my box. Thank you ever so much for coming in today, really appreciate it. Uh, Gabriella says I love your necklace, thank you so much, that's really very kind of you. Anne says I've made jump rings cutting with a jeweller saw, the best way, saw cut are the best. Love your earrings said Margaret, thank you very very much. Those are available as a tutorial on my YouTube channel. The whole tutorial is available for free. If you fancy that, give me a shout and I'll drop you a link. Thank you ever so much for being with me today. Now, if I haven't responded to your comment on the live, it's because I simply can't see it. Facebook is being a tad tricky for me today. Big hearts, hugs and love to you. Thanks for hanging out with me on the Jesse James Facebook page. It's been my pleasure to be with you. I'm Gem Hawks and I look forward, if they let me back, I'll be back with you at 11am Eastern next Thursday. Bye guys, see you soon. <laughs>